everyone. I am not at all set up. I haven't been live on my phone in a long time and I didn't remember how long it takes to get everything set up. And so basically it's live and I'm just standing here trying to get my phone all figured out. So if I can make this thing happen. That's not gonna work. What's up, Sean, my man, Jack, how is it going? I'm trying to get my phone set up. I didn't really plan this out. I'm from live on my phone. What's going on, everyone? We're gonna be making some soft plastic baits here in just a half a second once I can figure out where I need to be putting my phone at. See if this will work. Sorry, I apologize. Okay. What's going on everyone? I can see you, you guys can see me. We're gonna be making some soft baits and talk, talking fishing. I just dropped something over there. Purple copper gold flakes are small magic. I will show you something I poured up last night. Hold on. This is one of the baits I poured up last night. It's a really weird color. It came out really, really interesting because it's basically like sort of that mango color, but as you guys can see in the light, it's watermelon, so it's translucent, but then you have that purple and copper flake. So this is gonna be a really cool color. I tried to get as close to mango magic as I could. This one's not too far off, and then I poured up a couple others as well. Can you guys hear me fine? Is everything coming through pretty well? I've no thumbs up, so I don't know if everything's going well or not. But we're basically just going to be pouring up a bunch of random stuff. What's going on, Rocky Top? How are you, my man? We probably won't hang out on here too long. Um, I should probably mix this a little bit more. Just because I'm on my phone and my phone might die. But I wanted to hop on here and take some questions. All of this stuff tonight is from Do It. So this is Do It Plastic. I'm gonna be using Do It Molds and their Do It Soft Bait Colorant as well, X2 Colorant. So there's a lot of really cool stuff we can do. Is anyone fishing this weekend? I know it's opener up in Canada. So I know I have some Canadian buddies hitting me up telling me they're fishing. Yeah, live streaming. Live streaming is fun because I can actually get on here and talk to you guys and interact with all of you rather than being on a really serious like video format. I also get to be myself a little bit more so you guys can hear me kind of being myself. Last weekend, Columbia River. Ooh. Columbia River is one of those places that I always wanted to go fish. But I've heard it can be just as hard as it can be good. So what I poured in here is a cup of plastic. This is one cup of Plastisol. And then this is some Plastisol stabilizer. What's going on, uh, Hannah? I almost said 706. I know it's you. So this is just Plastisol stabilizer, which I pour about a cap full in. And I'm not a pro. This is just what works for me. So then I use a knife. And just stir this thing up. Ooh, white whale. That will be awesome. Yes, happy early Father's Day. I'm thinking of launching a series every Sunday called Bourbon and Bass Conversations, where essentially what I do is sit down with one glass of bourbon and we talk about whatever topic you guys want to hear me talk about. So it could be sponsorships, it could be, um, I don't know, tournaments, fishing, it could be anything you guys want and just sit down and have like a 10 15 minute conversation while i drink a glass of bourbon and kind of hang out if you guys would enjoy that go let me know in the comments because i think that could be a really cool topic what i'm going to do is i'm going to basically try to start warming this up to 350 degrees so i'm going to start at a minute and then uh we'll go are we back 
Well, that's my problem because I literally started a microwave and it, and it disconnected. So I don't know if it's still going to work or if it's not going to work because there's my microwave. But, yeah. <laughs> we good now? I got to put you guys way over here. This is my water tub. This is where I put the finished plates. i to stir this stuff. Big thing is hand protection. This stuff is going to get so hot. The glass is going to get so hot. So you got to be really careful. I can still see you guys. If you guys can see me. I just got to keep stirring this stuff up and getting this stuff heated up so we can pour some stuff. Keep it away a little. Oh, perfect. Okay. I'm going to fish a tournament tomorrow. You guys were absolutely in love with that last tournament video, so I'm going to fish another one tomorrow. What would you guys like to see on the bourbon and bass conversations? I saw a bunch of people said that they'd like to see that. So what would you guys like to see me talk about? Any specific topic, anything that you guys actually want to see me talk about or just whatever comes to mind or... Thank you, Pascal. I appreciate that. Dude, I went out totally blind last week and did pretty well. Um, tomorrow's going to be interesting. I, I was having this conversation with my buddy the other day. So there's two types of tournaments, right? There's the tournaments that... There's the tournaments that you go out and you grind through, and it's basically a matter of who gets the five bigger bites or the three bigger bites, whatever the limit is. And then there's a tournament like tomorrow where it's just a matter of who's going to catch the biggest fish and who's going to be on the right quality of fish to actually win the tournament. Because tomorrow I think you're going to see a lot of fish weighed in. It's a five fish limit. But I think what's going to separate the guy that wins from the guy that finishes in 10th is like the guy that got on the bigger bite. Like consistently bigger bite and knew what the fish were actually doing. With the grinder tournaments, you just got to keep the trolling motor on and like cover water effectively versus being on a very specific area or spot. What time of year can we catch the biggest smallmouth? For me, mine is in the fall. I love fishing in the fall. I think the spawn and pre-spawn, you can catch giants too. But I like the fall because they group up and they're feeding really, really heavily. So like October, November time frame. I saw I missed a question. Bearded, I missed your question, Pascal. I was trying to put that stuff back in the oven. How to fish a smallmouth in a deep reservoir with current. The biggest thing there is finding actually where they're going to be hanging out. So like figuring out their migrational patterns. So understanding, okay, when they're pre-spawn, they're going to be on these main lake points and then they're going to move to the secondary and this is where they're going to spawn uh, just inside the mouth of a cut or something. Basically understanding their migrations and movements because as long as it's a reservoir, as long as there is some sort of, you know, contour changes, they're going to set up on those contours even if it's deep. Just think about the lake as if it's a normal, you know, inland large mouth body of water and um, a lot of times they'll set up on very similar locations just in deeper water Kentucky Lake for example is a really good one so Kentucky Lake's really cool because it sets up pretty much typical of what Bassmaster talks about on those main lake points and everything um, and so you can pretty much run it exactly like what Bassmaster would say Guys, I'm going to miss a bunch of questions while I turn my head because they stick up here for like 30 seconds and then they go away. Maybe not even that long. 30 seconds is not long. They probably stay up there for about four seconds. I'm just trying to stir this plastisol to get it to heat evenly. So rather than stick it in there for five minutes and let it get to temperature, I have to go like minute by minute by minute and then go down to 30 seconds at a time. Because it pours clear or it pours white and then it goes to clear. So I missed some more comments. What did I miss? <laughs> Do a deep dive into the past week's video topics while taking a deep dive into some bourbon. Yeah. Actually would not be a bad idea. How to grow a fishing page on social media. Rocky Top. I love that, dude. You're absolutely killing it on social right now. If you guys are not on TikTok, TikTok is a crazy platform um, where you can see some really funny things, but there's a lot of really good information. A lot of people think it's just boobs and boobs and jokes, which it's a lot of that, but 
There's some really cool stuff on TikTok too. Okay, see how it's getting progressively clearer? By the end of it, it's gonna be just straight clear plastic and then we're gonna mix the color in there. Did I miss some questions or comments? What's going on guys? Um, I have a question. How many of you guys are in full blown post spawn? Cause pretty much everything is in full blown post spawn around here. Unless you go way up north. Everything close to home is post spawn though. Cause this is the time of year when everything is really, really tough for me. You know what I mean? Like things will get really tough and they'll get really slow and you have to throw a Nico rig and a Senko and stuff you don't really want to throw. Um, but then they'll get good again here in a little bit. Your smallmouth goes shallow as largemouth during the summer. Basically, smallmouth for me stay shallow. You'll have a group of fish that will stay shallow all year long. Um, but for the most part, like that 10, that like 8 to 15 foot range to me is what would be the most consistent and have fish over and over again because it has everything they need has food cover shelter and that's the time of year or that's the depth where i seem to catch the most and the biggest fish we are almost there we're at 330 degrees i need to get a couple more degrees warmer Another 30 seconds, I'll be there, and then we'll add some color to it. What color should I make? Should I try to make Mango Magic, which is basically that amber purple flake, or should I try to make like a perch color? What color do you guys think we should make? Ooh, I love the sponsorship one. Sponsorships would be interesting to hear about um, how it works, which companies you've chosen to work with, etc. What are some key baits for fishing? Smallmouth in deep water. I like a drop shot. A drop shot's my go-to <clears throat> for smallies in deep water. So I'll show you guys the perch color that I made earlier, and then I'll show you guys what I want to try next. And that perch color that I want to make next, I can actually turn into a Mango Magic. Like, I'll run a perch color, and then I'll <clears throat> add some more coloring to it. I have to stop talking when I'm standing directly over this stuff, otherwise I get it all in the mouth. We are there. Three hundred and fifty degrees. So we're gonna try and make a perch color. So what I'm gonna go with is the base is watermelon green. And then we're going to add a little bit of copper flake to that. Because I tried it with the gold hollow, the really thin gold hollow, but it didn't really work that well. Smoke purple is a great color, too. Around here, it doesn't work nearly as well because our bodies of water are a little bit more stained, but... So 10 drops of watermelon green, which is actually pretty clear. I'll show you guys what that's going to look like. I know, I stirred too quick. I'm going to get bubbles. Hate me. Smoke purple works, but my problem is unless I'm up north where the water's clear, I just don't have as much confidence in it. When this is heating up again, I'll grab the other perch baits that I made earlier. They turned out pretty good. I put them on my Instagram. It's basically watermelon with the really small uh, gold tinsel. Looks pretty good, but I want to add some of the copper tinsel instead, or copper copper flake instead. What's up, my man, Connor? Connor, you've been crushing them, dude. Yes, I'm using Do It Plastisol. 
Yeah, watermelon red flake laminated on light green pumpkin copper purple flake would be so dope. I don't have a laminate, uh, dual injector to do laminates, but that would be so, so sweet. Okay, so there's your watermelon. It's going to be a lot lighter than that. And then we're using copper point four, which is a little bit bigger flake. I'll explain why here in a minute. I want to add a decent bit, but not like so much that the whole plastisols got it. You'll start to see it mixing in. Yeah, just a skosh more. This is what I screwed up last time. I added so much of the gold 0 0.015 that the plastic looked like it was basically gold. <laughs> it was ridiculous. So I want to be careful in how much I add. But you guys can see that it's got a decent bit in it, not a not a two ton. I probably added too much of that too. I know I did. Well, that's a decent bit, like you guys can see. There's a decent bit in there. This is what we're gonna start with. So to reheat, and I'm gonna make this in the swim bait mold. Hold on one second. This is what the watermelon with the smaller gold flake looked like earlier. So pretty dang sweet, pretty cool color. I'm going with the bigger flake though this time. And we're gonna shoot it into that swim bait mold, which is right here, I believe. Yeah, this is the swim shad mold. It's basically a little swim bait. Cause then you can drag this on the bottom and we're gonna turn this into a goby color later. So we're gonna start with this. And then we're gonna turn it into a goby color. I'm gonna try to get this as close to you guys as I can, but I gotta keep it off the edge of the table too. This little swim shad mold is one that I'm ex extremely excited about. My buddy Caleb throws it on chick a lot because it kind of gets pressured so much. Chickamauga. Three forty-eight. That's perfect. So I'm going to take my injector, and I draw up. I know you can pour in; you'll get less bubbles. I haven't had any issues with my molds. And go to the mold. Press till it stops. Fill it up. I might have screwed that one up, guys. I'll be honest with you. And you'll see me, if you guys watch me long enough tonight, I'm sure I'm going to knock this tip into there about 14 times because I've done that so much already. I'm going to basically blow the tip of my injector into my plastic. So we're going to give that a second to kind of cool off. Then I just keep a bucket of the excess. I'll remelt that later. Worst come to worst, if your color comes out bad, act dark, or add dark, and then it comes out black. That's a great idea. Fishing with Tanner. So I have a swim shad mold, the three and a half. I have the Erie darter mold, crosstail mold, Midwest finesse, and a tube mold. Um, yeah, it's a, so it's a chicken, it's a chicken uh, foot mold. I'll show you guys here in just a second. The Plastisol I already had heated, basically got it to 350 before I added the colorant and the um, and the flake to it. But we'll add some other colorant, we'll add some pumpkin seed and some motor oil and it'll make it that mango color, well closer to the mango color. I'm, I'm figuring out how to make the exact mango color. <laughs> Am I making a cake? Yeah, something like that. The zipper mold, uh, this is not the zipper mold. I'll pour some zipper molds to show them because that's another really cool bait. That's a really cool bait. Of all of the molds that I have, that zipper mold is going to be probably one of my favorites. Oh, this turned out so good, guys. Look at this. That is such a good color. Basically just watermelon with a little bit of gold in there. 
And then I'm gonna set them in this water here. What's cool about setting them in the water too is for the molds that float, like for my drop shot molds that I wanna know if they float, you'll see them float. And like, if I have a bad pour, um, if I have a bad pour, I can pull the ones that don't float off of there. I'm gonna pour the zipper. Hold on one second. Sorry guys. I had a stand, I thought, but it didn't work. So this is the zipper goby mold. Which you guys can sort of see there. This is the mold that I'm just ridiculously stoked on. I am partnered with Do It. I don't make money from them, but they are a great company that I work with um, and I'm partnered with. I'm gonna stir this and then reheat it. Dang it. Hold on, I'm coming back, guys. I'm coming back. I missed some questions. Felt like I was drinking bourbon there for a second. Uh, all of these molds you can get on Do It Mold's website. Tackle Warehouse also sells a lot of these as well. Um, they're pretty expensive. That Zipper Gobi mold's really expensive. Um, but being able to pour, <clears throat> pour my own is going to save me a lot of money. Especially with Pour Boys, their stuff is not nearly as soft or good. I can pour the exact colors I want. <clears throat> I have to stop talking over this freaking plastic. <coughs> Um, exact colors I want and make it exactly how I want the bait. So every time I pull it out before I shoot it, I try to make sure it's 340 to 350, 357, so it's perfect. Draw it into the injector. Shoot a little bit out. This mold actually doesn't take very much plastisol at all. And then just shoot it in until it stops. And then fill up the top. And the other thing I found is if you get it all over the table, you don't have to feel too bad. It all pulls right off. Unless you're doing it on like a porous piece of plywood or something. Then I would be so screwed. And don't drop the end off in your plastic. You'll be in there digging around for it for 10 minutes. What's up, dudes? What's some lures you have comp or some confidence baits and colors you have for smallmouth that you'll be pouring? So this one is one of those confidence colors. Basically what it is is a watermelon with gold flake. It looks like a perch. Um, also in cleaner water can be used to imitate some shiners and some other bait fish. But this is a color I have a lot of confidence in. I tried pouring it earlier with a little bit smaller um, gold flake, which I don't think turned out bad. I want to give you a, a quick tip on these uh, cross tails. When you rig these baits, do not rig them flat side down. Rig them flat side up. That's going to help the bait stand out better and get a lot better action. The reason for that is because the water can flow around the body. And when the water runs on the underside of this tail, it's actually keep, going to keep this more horizontal and leveled out and that T is going to catch water and cause it to shimmy. A lot of people, when they got the jackal crosstails, were rigging them flat side down and wondering why their baits were sitting a lot like this. Well, there's nothing holding that bait up. It still catches fish. Way more effective rigged this direction. Just kind of a tip for you guys. Shoot. Plastic's been sitting out for three minutes. Sorry about that. We're gonna shoot one more with this color, especially if these zipper gobies came out well. And then we'll add some more color and pour a different color. What's going on guys? We are getting more people in here by the minute. I do these kind of late, last, last minute. If you guys don't see a video come out from me around 7.30, I'll probably do a live stream. Um, just easier for me some nights, especially with the baby. I can focus on her throughout the day and then come and do this in the evening. These turned out awesome. 
These are going to be great when the water is a little bit uh, clearer too. Look just like a goby or a perch swimming down there on the bottom, closer to the bottom. That is a zipper goby. This is such a good mold. So that color and then the other color that I have a lot of confidence in that I'm really trying to get right is Mango Magic. Those are going to be the ones that I'm going to pour probably the most of. I'm going to stir this and then I'm going to shoot one more of the zipper goby in that color. And then I'll add some stuff to it, show you guys how to make it closer to Mango Magic. Actually, screw it. We're just going to go straight to Mango Magic. So what I'm going to do, add some pumpkin seed, which is brown. I'm only going to add a couple drops, like three or four drops. Oh, well, okay. We're adding five drops. We're adding five drops. So Mango Magic supposedly is watermelon green with amber. I don't have the amber yet. Um, but we're working on getting some. So I already have the copper flake. So I'm going to stir in that brown to the watermelon green. And it should, in theory, get darker. Actually, this pumpkin seed is that color. It'll get darker for us here in a second. You can already start to see it. I might add some motor oil to this as well. Get it a little bit darker even. Because I'm close, man. I'm so close to getting that color right. But it's just not... It's too translucent still. When you put it up to the light, it's a very translucent bait. It's going to end up being a weird color. Motor oil, pumpkin seed, and watermelon green. You guys can start seeing it getting a little bit darker. way darker than it even looks to you guys it's it's way more brown which I'm okay with then I'm gonna add 0.4 purple light purple oh wait glad I, glad I did not just dump that in there that's 0 0.15 0 0.4 purple give it a good little shake in there this is gonna turn out so well so well Dark green pumpkin, dark brownish green purple flake is going to look so good. I should do that. Silicone baking mat. Um, I just missed someone's question above the silicone baking mat. Sorry, I was looking down at the plastic. I'm going to add a little bit more purple. Oh, that's a lot more purple. Well, boys, this is going to have a lot of purple in it. This is going to have a lot of purple in it. Holy smokes. Purple's a good color. Huh. I mean, it's purpley. It won't look terrible. It won't look bad, I promise. It looks pretty good, to be honest with you guys. Just kind of get this thing back up to temp and I'll show you guys. I missed some questions, I'm sorry. Purple bleeds badly with a lot of manufacturers. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, so, you know what else bleeds, or what else bleeds really bad is green pumpkin blue. Don't put it, do not put it by a bunch of other baits. It will make them all dark, dark, dark. The Ripper, I've seen that. It looks great. I have so many swim baits, though. I love swim bait fishing. So I have so many swim baits, like, it's hard for me to make more swim baits. That's why this chicken foot, that's why this mold right here is going to be so good because it's something a little bit different. I'm actually going to pour quite a few of these with this green pumpkin purple or with this mango magic knockoff sort of color because I didn't pour many last night and I wish I had.
We're just stirring real slow now. I want to make sure that I don't put too many bubbles in it. And we're going to put it in for another 10 seconds, 15 seconds, because we're at 330 right now. What's going on, my dudes? I missed some comments. I'm sorry. Can you send me an order for me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've actually had a ton of people that are like, dude, those look so good. They, they do look really good. The baits look awesome, to be honest with you. There we go. 20 seconds. This is going to be perfect. I'm going to stir this stuff up and shoot it. I can't talk when I'm over the plastic because... Like, gets in your throat. How many mold manufacturers only do it? Should you wear a mask? I mean, it wouldn't have hurt for me to wear a respirator. My buddy Ron, he shoots a lot of angling AI molds. He loves their stuff. But all I have, but what I've been shooting are the do-it molds, which are shooting really, really well for me. I don't know if that was a good pour or not. I have no idea. I wasn't paying enough attention. This color is gonna be sweet. It's a lot darker than the one I made yesterday too, which I'm pretty excited about. The one I made yesterday was really, really watermelony. This one here is a lot darker. Come on, get in there. Miss some comments? Yeah, I'm literally like garage doors right here. So I'm like five feet from the garage door. Okay, super stoked to show you guys this color. I was worried I added way too much purple. I don't know if there's such a thing as too much purple. Okay. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, dude. I got a little bit of flashing because I didn't have the mold clamp tight. But look how good that color looks. That does not do it any justice. This is my favorite color I've poured so far. That looks awesome. <laughs> yeah, that color in a tube is gonna kill it. We are gonna actually pour that color now in that uh, swim, that swim and shiner mold or that swim and shad mold, which is this one. Cause so the deal with this mold, the reason that I'm so excited about this one is because I can put it on a, a swing head or I can put it on a jig swim it around shallow water, which is something I've not really had a whole lot of baits that I can do with. I'm sorry if you guys came to see a bunch of different baits. I'm literally pouring all swim shads and zipper gobies, it seems like. And probably I'm going to finish this out. Yeah, dude, this color, which I'll pull that flashing off. This color turned out so good. I don't know if it's
to you guys or it's just me. I have like such bad OCD, I cannot stop the microwave unless it's on a five or a zero. Dude, that's such perfect time. 350 on the dot. This one's gonna be the swim shad. Three and a half inch. This mold doesn't take very much either. Neither this mold nor the zipper goby takes much plastic at all. I don't even think I use half a plunger. I could probably do both at the same time. The one thing I don't want to have happen though is me think I can do both at the same time and then end up like a half pour or half shoot on one and have to remelt all those baits. I know it's not the end of the world, but just a waste of time. Also, one thing you guys will see is I'm going back under the table and tossing a bunch of this little plastic in, in a cup or in a, in a five gallon bucket down here that I can um, remelt. So what I'm gonna do, <laughs> microwave is zeros. Dude, zeros every time. But what I'm gonna do too is like these bad plastics, I'll pull this off and I'll remelt it down with the color pretty similar. But I'm just basically gonna try and pick the flashing off this one. It's not that bad. But that zipper goby, dude, you guys are going to see me throw so much of that this year, hopefully. So here's the swimming shiner, your swimming shad. Oh, dude. That is so good. I'm going to pour the rest in that swim shad mold. I'm curious, does anyone know where the zeros came from? Where me talking about when I weigh my fish every time I go zeros, does anyone actually know where that came from or when that started? Interesting story on that one. Sorry, this is all a bunch of water. Keep pulling those baits out of there. Does anyone know where the zeros came from? How much for the remelt? Come watch my live, my dude. My buddy Ron just tried to call me. He's the one that actually got me into soft plastic bait making, so. He must have just seen that I was live because he just shot me a text too. So zeros, I'll tell you guys after I pour this one because if you guys have been on here for a minute, I can't stand over and talk. I can't breathe. So the remelt, what I'm excited about is like, let's say I go through a bunch of baits that are the mango magic color. I can just save the dead baits or let's say I go through, you know, a Berkeley bait or Strike King bait. I can just save that bait and remelt it down with a bunch of light colors and get a similar color. Add some color and add some flake. Just basically try and make that same color. The reason you guys see me pop it um, or over top the mold every time is <clears throat> because it sucks more air down into the mold when you're making it. 
I missed a bunch of these things. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that bait making is uh, gonna save much money, really, to be honest with you. In the long, long, long run, it might, but the initial investment, you know, is there was an initial investment for sure. So zeros came. It was the very first time that I was ever fishing with dirds that I said zeros. And the problem that I was having was I was catching like three pounders, three and three quarter pounders. And I'm like, okay, there's a three and a half. There's a three and a half. There's a three pounder. Like I always try to underestimate when I'm not putting them on a scale. And I got a bunch of comments from people saying I was weighing my fish wrong. My fish weren't that big. So I've weighed a lot of fish since then. And uh, basically every single time I show the scale, I go zeros and then I weigh it. And there's no cuts in between there for the most part because, yeah. I don't know. I just think it's one of those things that just is validity. Like, if you guys, if some people, not saying many people, if some people don't think that I'm weighing them right, let's weigh them correctly. This color that I'm pouring, guys, is pretty dang close to Mango Magic or just a copper, copper brown green, which is like my all time favorite smally color. And this is just like going to crush them. When they're on gobies, and I can throw this on a swing head or even just a little ball head on the bottom, this is going to absolutely smash fish. I know it looks like a swim bait. It looks like a shad. looks like a bait fit. Guys, it's going to smash them. Promise you. So I'm curious. What is your favorite bait manufacturer and the, your favorite bait by them? So favorite overall bait manufacturer and favorite overall bait. doesn't have to be by the same company. Just curious on this one, because I think I'm kind of on an island here. I'm going to stir this and reheat. We're going to go either until my phone hits low percentage or I run out of plastic, whichever one comes first. I will go back through those comments here in just one second. Okay. So I saw Kitech for sure. Matrix Shad by who? By who? Exxon Slammer, Zoom, Biospawn, Z Man, Yamamoto, Berkeley Power Bait. Yeah, I'm with you, George. Berkeley Power Bait from a domestic larger company is probably my all time favorite bait. That's what I got started with was the, the Chigger Craw. It was one of the very first baits I ever threw was a Chigger Craw on a jig with my buddy Andy Meyer. Um, and then a big old seven inch um, power bait worm, curly tail. And then the 10 inch. But yeah, for me, power bait is probably my overall favorite lineup of baits. And I've just fished Berkeley forever. Lately, I've been fishing a lot of like custom baits and Canadian baits and this, that, and the other. But like, if I just had to go with one company, probably gonna be Berkeley. And I don't mean any disrespect to anyone that's watching this and has a different opinion, but. I'm just saying. They're what I fish forever. And so they get my nod. Because they've been on the deck of my boat literally for as long as I can remember. I would love to see. What I would love to see from Berkeley is more, more variety of, like, creature baits. So one thing I don't think they have enough of... They have a lot of like the creature hog and whatever. I would love to see like a bait that I could put on a wobblehead really well. I, mean, I don't think they have a great bait that I can put on a wobblehead. I also don't think they have a great bait 
um, for a chatterbait. I know they came out with that. They came out with that deal. Missile baits is great. Berkeley Pit Boss, dude, was like so good. It was so good forever. But then it just kind of went by the wayside. Uh, so I'm going to add scent for these baits that I'm making. I'm going to add scent in the bag. So I'm going to basically add a scent to the outside of these in the bag. Um, I'm also going to... I'm considering adding micro salt as well, but I'm not sure. Berkeley has a lot of knockoffs on their hard baits. Um, particularly their top water, which... Yeah, I mean, they have the Chapo, but dude, again, no mean thing, no mean stuff to be said there. Only reason people really have said that is because of Millican. Same reason the only reason people have said the Guggen stuff looks like Sixth Sense is because of Millican when he made that video. So I don't know that that's really a fair statement because people could go to Sixth Sense and say they knocked off companies too. It's just, just the way that it is. Anyways, look at this. This turned out pretty well. This one's bad. I want to pull this bad one before I actually put it in the water and forget about it. That one's bad. It had a little bit of flashing and it had a cut in the tail for some reason. Oh, Wobblehead. Wobblehead is the deal. They probably are. They probably are. Um, okay, Nemesis Baits. Someone that just commented Nemesis Baits knuckle dragger. What is that? So Brian McCarter, I've known Brian, I don't know, for a while since I was tournament fishing. I've known Brian since I was tournament fishing. What baits does he have? What is the knuckle dragger? Is that a wobblehead? What do I put on a wobblehead currently? Reaction Innovations, uh, Spicy Beaver, a Manus Grub, a Structure Bug. But I'm looking for something a little bit different. I've also played with... Okay, so don't kill me for saying this, anyone that uses this. Um, a Horny Toad from Zoom or Speed Toad. Those things look really good on the back of a wobblehead. And I know it's a topwater bait, but dude, you put it on a wobblehead and that thing will kick and go crazy. There are a lot of great comments that just came in and I totally missed them. Yeah, the kinky beaver. No, the spicy beaver, the new one with only two tails. That's the one that I use on the wobblehead. The kinky beaver is also really good too. Kai take crazy flapper. Never tried it. Z craw, also a good one. I fish a Z craw a lot. I'll cut it down and I'll fish it when those fish are on like bigger bait fish in the fall. Looks like we're down to our last pour. Things are starting to get kind of chunky and shallow. Three fifty six, final pour. Oh, sucked up some hard plastic, dang it. Okay, let's see if I can get this one. I'm not even going to try for another pour, boys and girls. That's kind of like the end of that plastic. So I'm going to save this and I'll remelt it down with my other stuff. Because that's pretty much, pretty much the end of it. So I'm going to let that dry. We'll chat a little bit.
What I also do is I'll take this and I'll set it in that water and let it harden. And then I'll put it in my bucket of plastic. Oh, dude. Top water is so much fun. Top water is ridiculously fun. Knuckle Draggers Angling AI. Oh, did not know that. Ron, what's up, my dude? Ron, so it was funny. You called me and this thing went into like a stick mode or like basically locked up on me. I'm like, Ron, get on my live stream, bro. Hop over here. So this is my new color that I came out with tonight. I think this one's sweet. It's darker. It's not as see-through as the other one that I made. That is the deal. Now, do I remember what I put in it? I'll probably have to go back and watch. I think I put 10 drops of watermelon green, five drops of pumpkin seed, and five drops of motor oil, and then way too much purple, which it doesn't look like there's too much purple, and some gold. Look at that. This is for me to go back and watch because I uh, totally am going to forget. But that turned out awesome. Let's break open this mold one more time. How many baits do I make in total? I've made probably way too many. So on this live stream, let's just count them while I wait for that mold to settle. I've made three, five, Eight, eleven, eleven of these shads, actually 14 of these shads, and six of the zipper gobies. So I made 20 baits in total for an hour. Now, obviously, I wasn't like really focused on just bait making, but that's about the right ratio about 20 baits in an hour. So for me to bake bags of soft plastics with eight in a pack, I would get three bags in an hour. Woo -woo. I'm not using any salt. Um, these are all just regular floating. I have no salt in these. I might add micro salt. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. I know there are some other uh, plastic companies as well. I've not even really looked into. My buddy Ron, which he's on here, could tell you guys all about soft plastic companies. Because he's my go-to man for all of this information so far. Fresh and clean out of the mold. Look at that. That looks so good. What I'm going to do, hang out here and pull some of this stuff off. What is the mango magic color that I mentioned a couple times? Well, this is as close as I've gotten so far. Basically, it's a dark green pumpkin with a little bit of orangish hue. Um, and purple and gold flake. That's what it looks like, pretty, pretty much, more or less. Check your text. Yeah, Ron's probably sent me some really cool sneaky stuff. I can't check it because I'm on my phone, so... Um, I can't check my text messages. So I'll check it here in a second, and I'll give you a call. Uh, the Zipper Gobi Mold. Yes, you can buy that mold. It's expensive, but you can buy that mold. It's three cavity mold, but it's an awesome, awesome mold. Let me show you guys that bait again. And then I'm taking all these uh, sprues and I'm basically just putting them in a bucket to remelt. This is the zipper goby, okay? Very similar to what, what's called an eerie darter. Phenomenal, phenomenal smallmouth catching bait. Um, you make three at a time and it is just such a good mold. Look at how soft these are too. There's like, it's not a hard plastic, which was my big problem. One of the other companies that I was using had a really hard plastic. Like the baits just didn't feel right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these in a bag and I'm gonna add scent to them. I'm gonna add scent into the bag and that's how I'm gonna scent these because they're totally unscented. They're just the smell of whatever that plastic smells like coming out of the mold. How many times can you rebelt the baits till the plastic's no good? I am not sure. I've never remelted a bait yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull them off the sprue and then I'm going to put them back in that water overnight and let them sit there and 
do their thing. What's my go-to scent? I've been playing around. I really like the gulp scent or the power bait scent. Gulp scent to me just smells absolutely horrible, but it catches a ton of fish. Power bait, tried, true, proven, catches largemouth and smallmouth, so I really like that. Have to use heat stabilizer on remelts. It's good to know, because I did not know that. I don't know much about soft plastic bait making yet. And then I'm just going to let all these baits just swim around in this water overnight and chill and do their thing there. I should, what I should do is rather than laying them in water, get a giant bag of scent or just to get a giant bucket of scent and have them floating around in scent. But I feel like I would go through so much scent that way. Like there's so much water on the ground right now. Another one that I like is smelly jelly. So like a bag of plastics, I'll take smelly jelly and put it in the bag and crinkle it around and get the baits all messed up in the smelly jelly. So this is the one that had all the flashing on it. And it looks pretty good now. I basically went through and pulled a bunch of that flashing off. Open up all those little zipper arms. She's ready to go catch smallmouth. Sorry guys, I'm ridiculous. Hook me up with some questions while I'm sitting here talking to you guys. Should I be cutting these off the sprue? Probably, but they don't look bad. They actually come off pretty good. I mean, watch. When I pull it off, pretty daggum clean. That's what it's going to look like. Rigged up on a wobble head, it's going to smash some giant fish. Or I can put this on a little football head or ball head jig and drag this thing along, along the bottom and catch them too. That's a cool bait. Is what is your like? What is your favorite wobblehead bait? I'm curious on this. Talked about this a little bit, I think. But looking for some more options. I talked kinky beaver. I talked menace. I talked structure bug. I saw Kitech crazy flapper. Saw a couple others. Biffle bug. Biffle bug. Man, I've not really fished a biffle bug. I fished a biffle hardhead. Didn't have great experience with that. Not that it's a bad head. I actually like the hook on it a lot, but. My problem is the way that I set the hook on a hard head is I actually swing on them really way too hard and I flex the hook out, especially on a three quarter ounce, um, especially on a three quarter ounce football head. John Garrett, what's up, my dude? Christy Craw. I've not fished that on a biffle bu or on a hard head. Gulp is nasty. Yeah, Ron uses gulp. You smell that bait and it does not smell. It smells bad. The adrenaline bug. Hmm. Interesting. So let me show you guys the other baits that I made, because I made a lot. Okay, so I had these all sorted. They're not sorted anymore. So this is my try at the Mango Magic last night. I actually really like... Kind of the way that it came out, it's a little bit more uh, cinnamony, but look at how clear it is. And actually, when you hold it up to the light, you see a bunch of watermelon color. So this is my attempt at, at that Mango Magic last night versus, let's show you guys last night and tonight. Last night's Mango Magic, tonight's Mango Magic. Different mixture. This one is... Watermelon brown, 10 drops. Um, pumpkin seed, 5 drops. So there's not near as much dark. And I think that dark helped it come out a little bit, obviously, darker. Flake's pretty similar between the two. But tonight, last night. But I poured a bunch of baits. So a bunch of these crosstails, which I'm pretty excited about. I think these get overlooked as a drop shot bait now since everyone's coming out with different drop shot baits, but they're still a great one. Yeah, they have a real cinnamon color. So like anyone in that tannic color body of water, it's a very good color. I actually think it's going to be good in a little bit cleaner water situations as well. These are, I made three swim shads. And then I made a bunch of these zipper gobies. Favorite drop shot bait besides the one I just made. I like the Berkeley Powerbait Max Up Flatworm. 
So that flatworm is really, really good. It's the closest thing I've found domestically that's easy to get to the, bur or the bass magnet twitch. Bass magnet twitch is phenomenal on a drop shop but it's hard to get so the the berkeley power bent berkeley maxent flatworm is like number one um yeah that's what i would go with almost all of the time so far <laughs> well pascal you are the man you are in canada so that doesn't even count i know you're like pretty close to him too i think this is their new, or this is their Midwest bait, um, their Ned bait, which is pretty cool. I poured up like this perch color. I think this perch color is gonna do pretty well around me, especially in cleaner water when they're feeding on perch really heavily. See that has that glitter in it? Paddles tackle. Huh. The problem is I know Mike really well, Mike and Mary, who own Bass Magnet. Um, so I have a couple. Try to make IU. I wish I could make IU. I do not have a dual injector to make laminates yet. So I'm basically just making straight colors, which I'm totally fine with at the time being. Um, I have so much stuff to play with. Go to Ned Bait. Probably the Ticklers by z-man the z-man ticklers is really good i also really like the hula sticks which i cut down and make it into a ticklers so that's those are pretty much my go-to net rig baits but yeah let me show you guys i mean i made a bunch of baits already the thing is when you make those drop shot baits they come at eight at eight or ten at a time so like i can make tons of these really quick if i wanted to sell drop shot baits i could i could sell drop shot baits but I could not sell the darters. I could not sell the swim shads because I only make three at a time. Look at this. So I'm gonna flip this thing around. Whoops. See? And then in there. So like, there's a lot in here. I don't know how many that is, but a lot. The Ned Zone is a great Ned rig bait as well. Watermelon Red Flake Hula Sticks. Great color. Um, watermelon red is a color that I don't necessarily play with a ton, but it gets bit. Could I make roadkill? 1,000%. I have the motor oil, and I have the light, like the really fine gold flake, which I used in here. So, yes, I could make roadkill. I also have Florida grape, which is a June bug color. I don't know what color I'm going to make with that. I think I can make some cool stuff, but... Go-to topwater is a head-in, one-knocker spook. I love that thing. I've caught more fish on that than any other topwater. Um, I also really like a popper, but that's very precise casting. Like, I don't fan cast that over a flat and fish it. That's very precise cast. Two targets. I'm really impressed with this bait. This little drop shot bait. I'm interested to see what Ron made. Ron comes up with some crazy, crazy, crazy things. But I can't go to it without shutting off my live, so I don't want to go shut that off yet. Arashi cover pop. Hmm. I've seen a lot of guys talking about that. I didn't know how much of that was hype and how much of that was real. Favorite popper in size. I get the Lobina Ricos um, when they're on sale at tackle warehouse the ones with the blemishes so the blemished ricos i get them on sale for like nine dollars a piece and i've had i bought i think 10 of them a couple years ago so i have a bunch and i don't fish them that much so i still have eight um so the rico not the real rico i think the rico is the smaller one i like that size the real rico i think is the bigger one whatever the smaller one is the one that i like Hook me up with some more questions. We'll go as long as I have some questions to answer. Dude, I'm fishing a tournament tomorrow. It's all largemouth.
Phoenix 920 is super stable. Now, it's not like a Ranger, right? It is more V'd out. And what I like about it is basically for rough water. I didn't go with the Phoenix necessarily for being the most stable boat, but it is it is stable. But in rough water, that thing cannot be beat. Unless you're fishing out of a Champion, which they don't make anymore. Although they make a knockoff, the Charger. Which I think is exactly the same mold. William, we don't talk about that. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, Bass Magnet Clearwater Perch is actually the bait that I caught. My biggest bag of smallmouth ever, 29.4, was that Bass Magnet Clearwater Perch color. Oh, the light's on. I can see these colors a little bit better. I'm still really stoked on this one. This is very close to the spanky color from Bass Magnet. Where have I fished on Lake Michigan? No, William, I'm just joking you, man. I've only fished Grand Traverse Bay. I've not fished a ton of any other places. For spawn around, oh, sorry. For spawn around the spawn, do I fish a jig or do I prefer a beaver or creature style bait? I like a jig, man. I, I will fish a jig almost exclusively. Like I'll flip a little bit with a creature bait, but I think a jig around here just works so well constantly. And I'll flip, I'll change up the skirt. So like. I'll fish a heavier skirt early season, then I'll go a little bit more finesse as we get closer to the spawn, and then I'll go really big when they're spawning or just about to get on bed, and then I'll get really finesse again with it. And then basically throughout the summer when a lot of guys are fishing those bigger jigs, I'll go with like a mini flip, Ike mini flip jig from Missile Baits, or I'll go with like a handmade half ounce with a three out or four out hook, small, small profile with a smaller skirt on it. I think that smaller skirt makes that bait look a lot smaller and you can get a lot of bites actually behind people that's something i don't share with a lot of people so that's kind of a, a good tip for you guys i've never drove a lund i've heard they're awesome my problem is i don't want to run an aluminum boat on the big water i just i know i know everyone says how good those aluminum boats are in big water i just struggle with the concept of running on aluminum Best Carolina rig bait for smallmouth. Don't fish a Carolina rig enough. I used to fish, I used to fish a darter on it a lot, a lot with the darter, but I just don't fish a Carolina rig enough. Top three baits overall: drop shot, crank bait, swim bait, for sure. Like not even a question. Drop shot catches me the most fish. Crankbait is the most fun fish in a swim bait. Catches me a good mixture of both. Because you can fish it on the bottom or you can fish it on the top. That's crazy, Ron. He said tube with a foam plug for the tube to keep it up off the bottom. Can you melt down a power bait worm and use it in your tube mold? I have no clue. I have no clue. I would think so. Um, but it, but it, but it, but it, how many guys smash them with the flapping hog? Oh, dude. So the flapping hog is the deal. There's another bait from Gary Yamamoto that is the absolute deal that I'm not at liberty to talk too much about because my buddy catches them on it and swears has swore me to secrecy. I don't drop shot a tube much, man. To me, the problem with drop shotting a tube is the way that it falls, it spirals so wide. And I just, I have a lot of issues with that. You know what I mean? Like when I drop shot something, I want it to fall, maybe a little spiral and get down to bottom and just have very natural action. But the tube, yes, it's going to stand out. I think it looks a little bit different. Even those small tubes, I've seen them. I just really struggle with it. I know guys on St. Clair that smash on it. I just... I'm so stuck in my ways too that like when I find a bait I like to drop shot or I, when I, you know, am drop shotting something, when I find a size that I like, I don't really play around with it too much. Fishing a, sol a small swim bait on a drop shot is something I'll do in current, only in current situations. It slows down the way that it falls. So if I'm fishing deeper water and I want a bigger profile, I'll go to a bait like a Z2 or I'll go to a bait like a Fluke that'll stand out straight, look bigger profile. If I'm fishing current situations, that's the only time I want to fish a bait with a paddle tail because it will keep that bait keeled up. It'll actually cause that bait to hunt and look like it's swimming. 
but it gets down so slow that I struggle a lot of times fishing it in shallower water situations or in situations where there's no current. That's my thought. Although there's really good technique, which you can do with, with a drop shot, you can take and cast it out. So here's a theory on drop shotting that I think a lot of people either overlook or don't really think about. When you're fishing a drop shot, if you have an 18-inch leader, you do not have your bait 18 inches off the bottom, very rarely, unless you're dropping straight below the boat. This is going to be in a drop shot video that I'm making. If you have an 18-inch leader, your bait might be 10 inches off the bottom, might be 12 inches off the bottom, especially if you flip it away from the boat and you're pulling it towards you because you now have that bait at an angle. So what was 18 inches off the bottom is now 10 inches off the bottom, 8 inches off the bottom. So if you're fishing it out away from you with a 6-inch leader, that bait is like this far off the bottom. I mean, that bait is like the length of this drop shot worm off the bottom, which isn't bad. I'm just saying it's, it's something to think about. So if you're marking fish five foot up or you're marking fish a foot and a half up and you put 18 inches on your leader and you go to flip it out, your bait's still below that fish. Food for thought. Let's add another light. Give me some more questions. Someone knows that little secret here is going to toss me stones, but a slammer, if you want to prevent it spiraling, put it up. Yes. Also the same sort of deal. The biggest thing, so the reason that it works turning it upside down is the same reason this works turning it upside down and keeping that bait killed out. Because when it does, it comes through the water a lot flatter versus this direction. When the water is pulling this bait down, this tail is going to come up and that's going to cause this bait to turn. But if it's upside down, you're basically giving it a flatter surface guarded by the line. And so it's just going to shoot like a missile. Really dumb, doesn't seem like it would matter, but it actually does matter the direction that you rig your drop shot bait. Another thing too, if you're noticing you're getting a lot of short strikes, I've switched over to the VMC, or you're losing a lot of fish in a drop shot. The reason for that most typically is because of the style of drop shot hook you're using. I lost a lot of fish on a drop shot because I was using a standard style drop shot hook or even an owner mosquito hook. And the reason for was because there's not enough hook shank, so you're just getting them in the top of the mouth. When you get them in the top of the mouth, you skin hook them, and when you fight that fish and you pull on it, um, it's because that skin actually tears and you lose that fish a lot of times. So by going with a longer shank hook, you get it farther back in their mouth and you get more opportunity for that hook to actually penetrate through the top of their mouth and keep them pinned. So going to like a VMC Nico hook size two or owner sniper finesse hook size one knot is the absolute deal promise you guys if you guys are not using those hooks you're losing fish so you don't have to be losing the other thing that i've noticed is that the owner mosquito hook one knot is just a slightly shorter shank than um the vmc or the owner nico style oh needle point over cutting point needle point Needlepoint is so much better for a drop shot than cutting point because you're just poking one straight hole through, so it's one straight hole in and one out. If you use a cutting point, you're literally cutting a triangular hole that will more easily tear or rip going into that fish's mouth. If you use a cutting point hook to each their own, but I'm warning you guys that needle point's going to be a lot better because you're not going to tear as big a hole and there's not going to be as big of an opportunity for that fish to throw that hook. You ever fry up your catch or what? Not nah, smallmouth. Everyone tells me I should catch some fish and keep them. Walleye will, but no. Not smallmouth. There are some really good comments on here. Hold on. Top three baits this weekend. Southwest Michigan, clear water, milfoil. I'm going to be flipping a jig. I'm going to be fishing a Nico rig, and I'm going to be fishing a top water. Never fish a sink rod do i fish turbs <laughs> turbs do i fish tubes in dirty water two foot or less uh you could i don't i would go with the ned rig or something with a little bit bigger louder profile and for smallmouth i would go with like a spinner bait and just like wake that bait almost on top do you mostly vertical fish a drop shot or do you go for casting like a net or a shaky head i will never just randomly 
I will never just randomly cast a drop shot. Now here's my thought process. A drop shot for me is not something that I can use as a search bait. So why cast it way out away from the boat? I'll make short flips or pitches, but no more than I can see with my pan optics. So no more than 80 feet. If I can't see it on pan optics, then I'm too far away from it to be fishing it effectively. But I'll flip it away from the boat, 50, 60, 80 feet away. But especially in shallower water, but if I'm in deeper water situations, I'll drop on them. Do I use rattles in all of my baits? Uh, I don't. I don't think I've used a rattle in a couple of years. I should, but I don't. A lot of people swear by a rattling tube. I just, I don't. Yeah, dude, jumbo perch will be great. Um, th do I throw spy baits and my thoughts on them? Tie direct or a loop knot? I tie direct. Um, you can use a split ring. It'll cause that bait to run differently. If you guys want a comprehensive review on what you should do or should do with the spy bait, I did something with David Swenside last week on my channel. It was like two and a half hours long, super comprehensive. I think he answered that, but I tie direct to it. I just use a Palomar knot, not the strongest knot, but it's the one that I have confidence in. Um, and yeah, that's how I do it. I know a loop knot will give it like, theoretically give it more freedom my problem with the loop knot is you basically are creating a bigger surface area in front of that prop so you're not getting as much water to that prop because you're kind of giving water an obstacle in front of it so that prop is going to spin a little bit differently than if it can spin more freely where are we fishing this weekend ron i have no clue my man could you power fish a drop shot as a bottle search bait what do you mean as a search bait, you could. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You gonna try and get your pro card or not enough opportunity with specializing in smallmouth? No, I'm just I'm just fishing some fun derbies. Like these are nothing serious at all. They're just weekend nighters. Um, just for me to get out. The biggest thing is, fishing tournaments just gives me an opportunity to go out for an evening but like they're nothing serious and they're all mainly largemouth lakes so i'm still going to try and get to the great lakes and i'm still going to try to fish smallmouth as much as i can but it's as much as i can ron i'm going to call you here in just a couple minutes and we'll talk about what we're doing this weekend because they found something out today that will kind of determine what we're doing when you tie marabou jigs how many times do you wrap fully around the hook are you looking for a full body or does it are you looking for a full body or does it have a more fluffy look? I'm looking, I don't know the number of wraps that I use. It just is going to depend on how full the bait looks. I don't want like a giant hair jig. I don't want like hair coming out everywhere, but I want it to be even around it and sort of have like an overall decent presentation. I don't even know how to explain that. Let me see. I don't have any on the workbench. They're all up in the boat and I don't really want to go get the hair jigs. Heading to South Dakota, waters are 70 to 72. What kind of pattern would I look for for smallmouth? Offshore on some sort of cover, whether rock or whether wood, with a wobble head or with a bait that you can drag over that really slowly. Drop shot would work really well too, depending on clarity. Spoon fishing for summer smallmouth? No, unfortunately not. I want to, but I just don't. As a bottom search bait, you could power fish a drop shot as a bottom search bait. And what I mean by that is basically cast it out and kind of slow reel it back or pull it back quickly. My problem is I could fish a wobblehead and catch that same fish, or I could fish a crankbait and catch those same fish, or a swimbait and catch those same fish, and then pick them apart with the, with the drop shot. So for me, it doesn't make sense to throw a little drop shot and drag it along when I can fish a swimbait and cast it out and reel it in and cover more water quickly. The, when I'm looking for fish and I'm looking for active, or when I'm looking for fish, I'm looking for active fish, fish that are actively feeding. And then once I know where they're at, I can sit on them and pick out every single fish with a drop shot. So it goes from looking for a fish, looking for an aggressive fish during the summer when they group up, then I can sit on them with a drop shot and actually catch every fish out of there or a bunch of fish out of there. So it doesn't make sense for me to pick up a drop shot when I can fish a wobblehead, find a fish, and then set out them with the drop shot. Does a wacky worm catch smallmouth? Yes, it does. Do I fish Lake Superior? I never have. 
Matching size swim bait on a football head or a spy bait. Uh, I would go... I would swim bait before I throw a spy bait. A spy bait is a slower presentation. It is a little bit more specialized for me, and I know that it will work. But the water has to be right. For me, not having the discipline to throw it, there have to be more conditions that make sense to me to, for me to pick up a spy bait than for a swim bait. Have I tried the one and a quarter ounce or three quarter? So the three quarter ounce chatterbait is phenomenal. Three quarter ounce chatterbait is great because you can fish it in deeper water and you can still keep it at a pretty decent speed. This is something that I saw last year on the FLW Tour. A lot of guys were doing that no one is talking about is they're taking that three quarter ounce and they're fishing it in 15 foot of water close to bottom where other guys would typically fish a swim bait or typically fish a wobblehead and they're catching those fish. It's something I want to work on. It's something I've not really done a ton of, but I know it flat out smashes fish. So I want to do that this year. I need to add scent to these baits because they do not have a scent. Like they don't smell like plastic. They just don't have a scent. Will you put the trolling motor on a hundred and search with live scope to find fish? 1000%. A thousand percent, especially on bodies of water like Northern Michigan, where it's just bowls and I'm looking for those cruising fish or I'm looking for the roaming fish, I'll turn that thing on about 70 and I'll just kind of go and I'll look for them in front of me. The problem is when you're that fast and those fish are cruising, you can't slow down fast enough to actually spin the boat around and make a good cast to those fish. So I'll have it on like 60 and I'll cruise along and I'll drive myself in circles around this lake chasing active aggressive fish. If I'm looking for something on the bottom, I will not turn the trolling motor on 100 and search for them with live scope. I'll look for them on side scan, look for cover or structure on side scan where I see the fish hanging out and then I'll come back and fish it. But if I'm on a body water, open body water, bowl, glacial style, I'll turn that thing on 60 and go for them. Yeah, because there's no other way to do it. You can't do it with the big motor. You have to see the bait up in the column. You have to see the fish up in the column and the only way to do it is with live scope. I was fishing that tournament last week and I literally caught three of, two of my three fish on live scope. I probably maybe would not have caught those fish without live scope. And I was trying to explain that to people at the ramp that were like, I don't want to spend the money that it costs for me to put live scope on my boat. And I'm like, please don't. I'm going to make a video on this because like, dude, for me to catch the fish that I'm catching, I'm using a live scope and I'm doing it. And a lot of people that don't have it are at a huge disadvantage. So don't put it on your boat. Like I understand it is a giant investment and I do not blame people. But if you have live scope, you will catch a lot more fish. A dead chipmunk. Thank you, my dude. Thank you. $10. I really appreciate it. Um, I just got a phone call. Sorry about that. You probably chat with rod companies. Why don't they use hook keepers in the right spot, not near my finger? What are you talking? Am I frozen? God bless. If I'm frozen, I'm going to be so upset. Can you just hear me? Can you see me? You can't see me? Come on. Hold on. Let me try something. Okay, guys. Um, looks like I'm frozen solid. Someone tried to call me and I can't. Okay, anyways, one more thing I'm going to say about the hook keeper. So I got my TFO rods, and it is down basically below the reel handle. I thought I hated it. I absolutely love it because when you put it in a rod locker, you put it on the back of your boat, all your baits aren't getting tangled up, and you're not hooking the line. A lot of times I was breaking off my line, or I would go to cast, and I'd have a nick in my line right above my reel because my baits were catching the line there. It will never happen below the reel handle my favorite spot initially i hated it i absolutely love it now it is my favorite spot for for a, a bait keeper you put it above the reel handle you put it above the foregrip i've had a lot of issues with that so anyways dudes i know you can't see me i really appreciate it we're at 70 people um 
you guys mean the world to me. I really do appreciate each and every one of you guys taking time to come and hang out. And a dead chipmunk, 10 bucks. Thank you so much. Like you have no idea how much I mean that or how much I appreciate that. So anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. Um, we'll probably do another live stream possibly on Friday. So we'll just have to wait and see. But until then, take care, Tate Lines. God bless.